Ah, <laughs> just kidding. Thought your sound was all messed up. Ah, did you turn it up? Did I scare you? Oh my gosh. I'm a comedian. What can I say? Ah, I don't even know why I went into teaching math. I am hilarious. Oh, yes, I am. I'm like Mr. Hilarious. So, here we are. Unit one. <clears throat> Day tres. Drei. I should speak in German to you. And we'd have a great time. So we're going to talk about unit one, day three. Today we're going to talk about one-to-one -one functions. And I'm thinking to myself, what else would you rather be doing than watching a video about one-to-one -one functions? Oh my God, it sounds like a lot of fun. You need to get a life. Put down the pencil and go out and kick a soccer ball around. Or go out and get a job or something. All right. Study first, then go get a job, because then you'll get a better job and you get paid more. Unless, of course, that crazy fool gets involved and says we should make $15 an hour working at McDonald's, because that would be just crazy, crazy. Even though, you know, we've got people working with the handicapped that only make $9 an hour, let's make the people at McDonald's make $15 an hour. Yeah, that makes sense. And guess what, kids? If it goes to $15 an hour, you are going to be out of a job, because nobody's going to hire a kid for $15 an hour. It's just not going to happen. It's already tough enough to get a job at $10 an hour. Try $15 an hour. At any rate, enough of all that. You're here to do one-to-one -one functions. My name is Mr. Krause. Says it on the shirt. I'm from Hilton High School, Hilton, New York. If you like what you see, hit the subscribe button. You'll get the videos popping right in your email stream. And just in case you're wondering, I do have a sponsor. My sponsor is Brugger's Coffee. Before I do one-to-one -one functions, or any math for that matter, I must have a little bit of Brugger's coffee. Mmm. Oh, that's hot. Delicioso. Brugger's coffee. Now, up to today, Brugger's has paid me exactly nothing. So I'm thinking about dropping them as a sponsor, because they're not, they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. You see what I'm saying? They're supposed to be paying me. Sorry, my light was a little bit messed up. They're supposed to be paying me. And they're not. They're not really supposed to be paying me. I'm just saying they're supposed to be, but they're not. I wish they would. Maybe I can get you guys to start drinking Brugger's coffee, and I'll make some more money. You guys ready? All right, here we go. One-to-one -one function. Let's talk about one-to-one -one functions. Uh, the definition. Let's talk about the mathematics definition, and then I'm going to tell you what you really need to know. But you need to start learning to understand mathematic definition. So this is sort of my paraphrase mathematical definition. It is a function, f and c, first. Must be a function. Let's see. It is a function where... The, well, each element in the range corresponds to one and only one element element in the domain. Now, if you are learning this properly, what you learned yesterday was a function is a relation where every single element in the domain maps to only one element in the range. So every x value, there's only one y value. Every element in the domain maps to only one element in the range. But now, what have I said? I said every element in the range maps to only one element in the domain. Now, you should have learned yesterday, also, there's a quick way to look at this. If, only one, if, only, if the domains could only map to one element in the range, that means we can't have multiple or repeating x values. Because if I do, there's more 1x goes to more than 1y can't have repeating x values. So, as long as we don't have repeating x values, it's a function. Now, to one to one, we're gonna flip that around, you can't have repeating y values. So, what I want you to remember, what I want you to try to, try to remember, is that one, no 
In order for it to be one to one, we're looking for no repeating x, excuse me, y values in order to be one to one. Now, we talked about functions yesterday. It has to already be a function. So no repeating y values. And two, a very quick way to do this is it passes the horizontal line test. Yesterday we talked about a function being a function, a very quick test is if it passes the vertical line test. Now, in order to be a one-to-one -one function, it has to pass the horizontal line test. And we'll see how that works in just a minute. So if I look at this first problem, the first question I want you to ask yourself is, is it a function? Do any of these x or domain values or input values go to more than one place? No, they don't. This goes to six, this goes to six, but five only goes to six. If I said, where does 5 map to, you couldn't argue with me. It has to map to 6. So this is, in fact, a function. Now, is it a 1 to 1 function? Well, now what we want to do is look at these line arrows backwards. 6 maps to 5. 6 maps to 9. And so if I said, hey, what does 6 map to? One person could say 5. One person, person should say 9. And you'd both be correct but you'd be arguing and be fighting and then it would get all crazy and we don't want that. So it's not a one-to-one -one function, not one-to-one. -one. Now, if we're gonna look at it graphically, I wanna look at it as a, uh, using the horizontal or vertical line test. Now, there's no repeating x values. This one, this one, and this one, and this one are the only parts of the domain. So negative two, negative one, one and two are the only numbers in the domain and they don't repeat. However, Negative 1 goes to 1, and negative 2 goes to 1, and otherwise it known as fails the vertical line to. So yes, it is a function, but not 1 to 1. All right, let's take a look at this one. This passes the vertical line test, so it is a function, but it fails. Let me draw it with a different color, because that would be more fun and festive. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh yeah, I'm ready. Okay, but it fails the horizontal line too. So yes, it is in fact a function, but not one-to-one. -one. Wow, how do you get a one-to-one -one function? Is there even such a thing? Oh, I'm glad you asked. Great question. It's a super question. Super duper. Califrigic. By the way, if you'd like the copy of my notes and you don't have these, go to mrkrausmath.com. Click on any one of my Algebra 2 classes, just go into classes, click on any one of these, and this is Unit 1, Day 3. The notes, the homework assignment, and a link to this video are right there. You're welcome. So, here we go. Passes the vertical line test. Boom. Function. Passes the horizontal line test. It's only hit once. It only be hit once. So this is a 1 to 1 function. This one passes the vertical line test. Also passes the horizontal line test. 1 to one function. There you go, kids. There they are. How about this one? Oh, well, it's a function. Passes the vertical line test. But look right here. Fails horizontal. So it's a function, but not one to one. How about this circle? Oh, not even a function. Cross it off. Total garbage. When I drink my Brugger's coffee, I love to cross off my zeros, my circles. I don't know what I'm talking about. It was a really long day today. Just in case anybody's wondering, yes, in fact, this is the cosine theta curve. You were wondering, I know. Cosine is a function, but look here, fails the vertical horizontal, fails the horizontal, fails the horizontal. So it's yes, it is a function, but not one to one. And finally, we get this last one. This last one is designed to trick every single person ever. It is, in fact, a function, because even though I could put a line through these, it doesn't hit the graph more than once, because it goes like through that open circle. However, let me erase that so you can see this, and I'm going to do it in red so you can really see it stand out red. If I draw this, this horizontal line, and look how many times I'm hitting that point. I hit it, 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 I hit that line like a million, billion, zillion, infinity times. And look. Bam, I'm going to hit it here again, too. Boom, I hit it more than once. I hit it more than once. I hit it more than once. So this is a function, but not one-to-one. -one. And one of the questions I asked in class is, what if I draw this equation of this line, or draw this line in right here, this horizontal, pretend it's horizontal, 
and it's the line y equals four. And then you came through, and you drew a horizontal line. You drew the horizontal. First of all, it passes the vertical line test. But is it going to pass the horizontal line test? And if you draw a horizontal line test, don't I hit that? Don't I hit that line over and over and over and over again? So this is a function, but not one to one. So determine if a relation is a function, just a function, we're going to use the vertical line test. And then for one to one, we'll use the horizontal line test. All right, now let's talk about what this looks like graphically. No, wait, sorry. Um, this is just some quick things. What's the inverse operation of addition? Subtraction. What's the inverse operation of division? Multiplication. Well, inverses are just kind of like undoing, kind of undoing what they're doing. But, you know, we're going to talk about inverses, another type of inverses in math, in sets of numbers or functions. And in order to find an inverse in a set of numbers or a graph, what we all we, all, well, all we have to do is switch the x and the y. I'm just going to switch them and you'll see eventually what this means. So if I come down here and if this is my set of numbers right here, this is my set or my function or my relation, I'm going to find its inverse. Negative 2, negative 3, 2, negative 2, negative 1. What am I doing? Well, I just told you what I'm going to do. I'm going to switch the x and the y. I just took these two things and switched them. That's it. And this is the inverse function. Later on, we're going to talk about what is how you, how do you uh, designate the inverse function. But that's the inverse function right there. All we do is switch the x and y. So again, you could you could pause this if you'd like before I put the answers to the next one up. Pause it. Pour yourself a little bit of Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Oh, did I just say the head? Sorry, maybe I'm thinking about getting rid of you, Brugers. Mmm. But you're oh so delicioso. So let's move on. Um, x equals 30, 40, 50, and 60. Those are the y values, or the, the range values. They got moved over here. And the domain values come over here. 3.4, 5.0, 7.0, .0, and 9.2. You just switch the x and y. That's it. All right, so this one's a little bit trickier because you got to draw this mapping diagram. These are always fun. Looks like two tombstones the way I draw them. So this is my input or my domain. This is my output or my, yes, what, what? Oh, you are so smart. Domain. So in this case, we're going to switch these. The domain becomes the range. The range becomes the domain. So in this case, the new domain is 38, 40, 50, and 75. The new range was the old domain, so that's 0, 24, and 36. So 38 right here maps to 36. 40 maps to 24. 50 maps to 24, and 75 maps to 0. Is this a function? No, it's not even function. So I can't even talk about whether it's one-to-one. -one. I didn't even ask you if it's one-to-one. -one. I just asked you if it's a function. So no, it's not a function. But certainly is it certainly isn't one-to-one if it's not a function. It's not one-to-one. -one. Oh, my God, you guys are so smart. We're going. We're moving. We're moving. Where's moving? Where's my mouse? I can't find anything. Anybody find my mouse? Anybody see it? I know. It just flew right by. There it is. <gasps> Let's look at what it looks like graphically. So what do I want to do when it's graphically? Well, there's a couple of different ways to do it. I'm going to show you two examples, and then I'm going to see if we can come up with a shortcut for it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at these points. These are points on the graph that I know about. They're the points negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 2, 0, negative 1. 2, 0, and 4, 1. Those are the points. Now, this is the original function. Now, I want to find the inverse. Well, in order to find the inverse, all we have to do is switch 
the x and y. So instead of it being negative 4, negative 3, it's negative 3, negative 4. Just switch them. Now this one's kind of uneventful, negative 2, negative 2. Negative 1, 0. 0, 2. And 1, 4. Find the inverse. Just switch them. Now let's plot these points. 1, uh, negative 3, negative 4. Boom, boom, down here. This point didn't move. It's still negative 2, negative 2. 0, or negative 1, 0. 0, 2. And 1, 4. And if I draw that line in, there it is. I'm going to come back to that. We're going to come back to that. There is my inverse. That's what the inverse is. Thank you again, Brewers. So let's take a look at, we got a point here. This is a nice point. We got a nice point here. And here looks like a nice point. So let me write these three points down. 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2. Well, now I'm going to draw its inverse. Well, I just have to switch the x and y's. Well, in this case, it's kind of boring. 0, 0, 1, 1. I switched them. And the last one is 2, 4. So this is a point, and this is a point, and then 2, 4. I'm having a hard time with green for some reason. Actually, I'm having a hard time, period. Go back to blue. Maybe blue will help. And 2, 4. So these are my new points, and I'm going to draw this in. Something like that. Now, looking at these two graphs and drawing on your experience from geometry, do you see anything or how these two things are related? Maybe it'll help if I draw something in for you. Let me draw this in a big green line. What if I draw this line in? What is this line? Hopefully you know that this is the line y equals x. Don't these things look like mirror images of each other? Don't they look like reflections? Give me a line y equals. Let's see if that holds true over here. Let's draw this line. Well, if I draw it in neatly. Then these are also reflections of each other. So it comes to terms that inverses are reflections over the line y equals x, and I think I asked that below. So let's do this now. I'm going to draw in this line. And reflect. This point is reflected and becomes here. It's a little bit off. And this point here reflected one, one here. And I go like this. Just make sure you draw it so they look like reflections of each other. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Not really cool. It just is. So I draw this line in. Well, part of this absolute value function I have drawn here is, in fact, already on the line of reflection. So these points don't reflect. They just stay on that line. They're not going to reflect. But this point's going to reflect. I'm going to go right into the mirror and on the other side. This point's going to reflect. Go right in the mirror on the other side. And so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight I'm going to highlight the first the original in yellow. So this was my original function. It's a function because it passes the vertical line test, but is it a one to one function? It is not. So in order for the inverse to be a function, the original function had to be a one to one. Like if I look over here, this is a function and it's one to one. So is its inverse. Its inverse is a function as well. And it's also one-to-one. -one. This one, however, is only a function. It's not one-to-one. -one. So when I, And if you look at the graph, you can see very clearly that the inverse is not a function because it doesn't even pass the vertical line test. That's all she wrote to that one, kids. So let's talk about these four questions. We talked about the fact that when you take an inverse, you take the x's and you switch them with the y's, otherwise known as you take the domain of one and you, it becomes the range of the other, and the range of one becomes the domain of the other. So the domain of f of x 
is the range of the inverse. The range of f of x becomes the domain of the inverse, of its inverse. And in order to find an inverse or uh, to find the inverse relation function, we switch. So the first method I taught you was to switch x and y. And the second thing I talked to you about was reflecting, because I asked about it here graphically, reflecting, reflection over line y equals x. Doesn't that make sense? If I'm going to switch the x and the y, wouldn't it make sense I reflect it over the line y equals x? I just switch them. Oh, y equals x, x equals y, x equals y, and y equals x. They equal each other. That's it, kids. We're moving on. I think I'm on the last page. This is going rather quickly. Now we're going to talk about this right here. This is the um, this is the notation for f inverse. It's not f. It's read f inverse of x. You don't want to sound silly and go f negative one there of x there that there thing right there there yeah. I know because my mommy and my auntie they're the same person. They told me. They know. No, don't sound silly. Just answer the question. It's f inverse of x. So, before I get to talking about what you're going to do with that, let's talk about a simple example. Let's talk about a simple example. This is just a line. This is just a line. And I want to find its inverse. I want to find its reflection over the line y equals x. So, if y is equal to x and x is equal to y, and I'm trying to find the inverse, I'm just going to switch the x and y. So in this particular problem, this becomes x equals negative 3y plus 4. Now here's where I differ than some math teachers. I like to fly through solving of equations. Where did my mouse pointer go? Come on, baby. I like solving math problems quickly. So this 3y goes to this side. It becomes positive. This x goes to the other side. It becomes negative x plus 4. In order to get y by itself, I divide by 3 and divide by 3. So my answer is y equals negative 1 third x plus 4 thirds. Now, I'm gonna, because I am, I'm going to get my calculator up. Like, eventually. There it is. I'm going to get my calculator up and show you that, that, what that looks like. But not for a while. What is going on here? That's not what I want. This is what I want. Okay, so let's try this one. Um, we're going to switch the x and y. x is equal to 1 third y plus 9. Now, in order to find the inverse, I'm going to switch the x and the y. So this becomes y equals 1. I already switched the x and y. What am I doing? Hello. All right, so McFly, you already switched the x and y. Okay, so I switched the x and y. But I still got to get y all by itself. So that 1 third is causing me all kinds of... Ah! Fractions! I hate fractions, man. They're awful. No, they're not. In order to get rid of fractions, all I'm going to do is multiply by the thing I want to get rid of. I'm going to multiply each piece by 3. So what I get here is 3x is equal to, now these 3's cancel, which is nice, y plus 27. Almost done. y is equal to... 3x minus 27. 27 comes over. Now, here's the problem, though. Let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at this. Where's my eraser? Why can I not do that? Erase. So I'm going to erase this. And then I'm going to go back in, draw, highlight. So I have y equals here, and I have y equals here. And they're inverses of each other, but based on the way I wrote it, it's really kind of hard to tell that they're inverses. So what we normally will do... Uh, what we'll normally do is we'll write this original as f of x equals 1 third x plus 9. And then when we find the inverse, instead of using y here, we'll convert it back to f inverse of x is equal to 3x minus 27. I think my calculator is, oh, my calculator didn't go. So I don't know where I am. All right, this one's pretty bad. This one's pretty easy. 
pretty crazy. All right, so we're going to switch the X and Y. So X equals negative 60.13Y plus 52.58. I want to get Y by itself. But notice my Y is negative, so I'm going to move this over, 60.13Y, and I'm going to move the X over, minus X plus 52.58. I don't need you. All right, all I got to do is get Y by itself, so what we're going to do is we're going to divide by 60.13, divide by 60.13, and I get F inverse of x is equal to this mess. And I'm out of room, so. Now let me show you up here that this worked. Let me see if my calculator's up now. So it was negative 3x plus 4. So I'm going to go to graphs. I'm going to go to graphs. And I'm going to negative 3x plus 4. Enter. There it is. And just because I want you to see it, I want to, I'm going to graph in the line y equals x. And I want to, I was hoping to make that line dotted, but it doesn't matter. It's red. So you, you see it. Okay. So now I want to graph what we said was the inverse of this, and that was negative one third x plus four-thirds. So, um, control division, negative one over three x plus four divided by three. And let's see what that looks like. Ah, so do, do these look like reflections of each other? Does I wish I could annotate. Does this point reflect over this one? Yeah, this is a hard one. They are reflections of each other, but it's kind of hard to see. But notice this red line goes right down the middle, right? So that point's not a point of reflection. But this blue, clearly, if I graphed it over and reflected it over that line, or red line, it would be on this black line. All right, kids. We've got a couple of problems left. Uh, don't worry about that. A horizontal line test determines where y values repeat to determine if the function, the actual function, is a one-to-one -one function. All right, so we're just going to do these inverses. You can pause it if you want, practice it on your own, come back and see, or just watch me do it. We're just going to switch x and y. So negative 2, 2, comma, 0, 3, comma, 2, comma, 4. There is the inverse function. Now, this one's a little bit more difficult. Notice, in this case, I gave it to you as f of x. Now, you have to remember in your vast memory that f of x is really just a fancy name for y. And then we're going to go back to what we've already talked about. In order to find the inverse, we must switch, dink, switch the x and the y. So instead of y equals, I'm going to write x equals 2x minus 13. Excuse me, 2 y minus 13. Now I got to get y by itself. So I'm going to add the 13, bring it over, x plus 13 equals 2y. And then I'm going to divide by 2 and divide by 2. So this is my inverse function right here. So f inverse of x is equal to 1 over 2x plus 13 over 2. And yeah, you can change that to 6.5, but there's no reason to it. All right, finally, we're going to graph it. We're going to graph this puppy, and we're going to do it using the reflection line. So we're going to draw in the reflection line. I'm going to draw in this line y equals x. And I'm going to take this son of a gun, and I'm just going to flip it right over. So this point goes to this point, and this point goes to this point. Well, that's kind of boring. How about this point? So 1, 2, and a half, a half, 1, Two. And if this if that was my original function, if this is my original function right here, that's my original function. Let me draw in the inverse of that. Something like that. 
That looks better. So there's my inverse function. And that's it. That's all she wrote. That's it for today, kids. You have just finished day three. We're talking about inverses. We found them by switching the x and y. We found them by graphing and reflecting over the line y equals x. And we found it algebraically by switching the x and y and then solving for y. OMG, our time is over. It was so much fun having you guys here. Are you still listening? I'm going to ramble on for a long time. I want to see how long you will. You can just hit the stop button, hit subscribe and stop, but I'll just ramble. Ramble. Rambling, 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 rambling. Hey, by the way, I'm really hoping we can dump Common Core because I think there's some cool stuff in it, but it's not great. I wish we could do some great stuff. Do I sound like Donald Trump? It's great. It's great. All right, kids, I'm out of here. Catch you on the flip side, homies. Bye.